Now that Republicans have delivered everything they promised to the evangelical right, like overturning Roe v. Wade, you'd think they'd be talking a lot about their victories. You might think again on that one because it turns out it's not as popular as they thought it would be. And that was on display actually over the weekend at the Family Research Council's Pray Vote Stand Summit, which began on Friday. Top Republican candidates for 2024 who were there have trod carefully on abortion at the Family Research Council's Pray Vote Stand Summit. The tech entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy did not mention the word at all. Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida, cited his state's six week abortion ban in a single sentence. And only Mike Pence, a good old Christian nationalist, the devout former vice president, unambiguously committed to a 15 week national standard. In other words, a federal ban on abortion. Trump, interestingly, because he is a bad liar, said something kind of honest. He said, quote, I will say politically, it's very tough. It's a very tough decision for some people, but very hard on elections, very, very hard. We had midterms and this was an issue, this meaning Roe v. Wade. You know, now we can win elections on this issue, but it's very delicate and explaining it properly is extremely important. Many politicians who are pro-life do not know how to properly discuss this topic, which is important to the people in this room. So important to millions and millions of people in our country. So he's kind of saying the thing, backing away from the thing, saying the thing, but look, look at the polling. 80% of Americans oppose a federal abortion ban, 65% of Republicans and 83% of independents. And, and to say nothing of 70% of more Americans who support Roe v. Wade. Um, before I, I kick it to you, Senator, I just wanna look at, this is very interesting because it's the question is how many religious uh, Republicans are there left? How religious are people, right? So this is some interesting polling. Um, in 2016, actually, just 39% of Republican voters attended church less than once a year. In comparison, just 36% said they attended religious services at least once a week. But then that has shifted a lot. Uh, low attending Republicans remain a crucial voting block for any candidate. So I don't go to church, but I say I'm religious. Um, who want to be, they're a crucial voting block. Their numbers are growing. 44% of Republicans attended less than once a year in late 2020, and an increase of five points since Trump's first bid for the White House in 2016. Over the same period, the percentage of frequent churchgoers has been in decline. In 2008, 44% of Republicans reported they were in church at least once a week. But by 2022, that number slipped just to 35%. In comparison, the share of Democrats who attended weekly only declined five percentage points during the same period. So a bigger drop in the number of Republicans attending church weekly than Democrats. Very interesting, not the same numbers, right? You got 18% versus 35%, but a bigger drop. I guess I'm just curious, Senator, your thoughts on like, just how fake some of this religiosity has truly become in the Republican Party. Well, Francesca, as a church girl myself, I, <laughs> I I don't know as 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 I don't know if I would couple going to church with how religious or spiritual one is. We know that COVID certainly changed patterns. I mean, the data you read, it seems that the pattern was changing even before COVID, but COVID definitely exacerbated the way that we respond right. in very in, in many avenues of our lives. That's from working more at home to, hey, I'm just gonna catch the gospel. I'm gonna do what we call in my community, bedside Baptist. <laughs> turn the preacher on the on, on my on my phone or on my computer, you know, and so that pattern is is uh, is is real. And even though Democrats seem to be going to church a little more, uh, there's still there's still some fall off about who physically goes to the church. My other observation is, you know, what would Jesus do? I mean, maybe they don't want lightning bolts striking the church, so they just decide to. <laughs> to maybe stay out of, of it on, on the lighter side. But this voting block is not going anywhere. They are still just as powerful as they ever were, whether or not they congregate inside a traditional church building or not. The yeah. Republican Party is still going to bend uh, to their will. Yeah, I mean, it was interesting. Um, you know, that uh, some of the people who were attending the summit said it wasn't, let's just jump down to this. Uh, I think graphic eight says it well. Um, 
they were not really swayed necessarily by Roe v. Wade and their understanding of the rest of the country. Michael Case from Beltsville, Maryland said, I want the candidate that's gonna win. I'm very focused on winning this year. So if I had to pick this second, I would pick Trump. I'm still against abortion, but you gotta recognize there are a lot of people who have a different view. And so we need to turn their hearts and minds and that takes a little time. It's okay to be a little bit pragmatic and win. So again, a little bit of acknowledgement that the majority of the country is not on board with overturning um, abortion rights. And you're totally right about attendance and religiosity. I just think it's funny to point out, but no, it's true. You can still have your own private moment with your own private God. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.